Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I am Ayla Ellison, Managing Editor with Becker's Hospital Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we will have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. We are looking forward to hearing your question. Additionally, in about a week, of, in about a week following the webinar, we will be sending you a copy of the presentation to the email you use to register. At this time, it is now my pleasure to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Tom Flory works in ECG's ambulatory surgery practice. He has significant healthcare and consulting experience that includes opening and operating ambulatory surgery centers and group practices, as well as providing interim management and consulting services. Tom's expertise helps clients helps clients succeed in achieving and maintaining compliance with state, federal, and accreditation agency regulations and plans of correction, and he assists with developing new service lines and business operations. His extensive experience negotiating managed care agreements has created meaningful value for many clients as a result of restructuring existing payer contracts and negotiating new ones. Tom works with ASCs to optimize business development opportunities, including spines, total joint replacement, and other high acuity services. Our second presenter is Matt Kilton, and he is an associate principal in ECG's ambulatory surgery practice. His expertise centers on preparing fiscal and operational strategies to support the development of new ambulatory surgery centers and improve existing facilities. Much of his work focuses on the negotiation of sustainable and profitable managed care contracts for ASCs, physicians, and other ancillary providers. In particular, Matt often assists distressed providers with re-engineering their managed care relationships and business operations. He has helped numerous ASCs prepare for opening by negotiating reimbursement agreements that position them for immediate and long-term success. Matt has also assisted large group practices looking to enhance their managed care agreements. Matt, I'll now turn the floor over to you. Ayla, thank you very much and uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, just a brief introduction to, uh, to ECG management consultants. Uh, we partner with uh, providers to create strategies and solutions that are transforming healthcare delivery. Uh, we have 40 years of experience in the healthcare industry and uh, help organizations, uh, position organizations to thrive in what is increasingly a value-based world. And last year, ECG and Avea Health joined forces to create a firm that uh, has umbrella dominance in uh, ambulatory surgery in addition to ECG's core uh, competencies of strategy, finance, operations and technology. So just a, a quick uh, couple mug shots so you know who's talking on this side of the phone and look forward to your questions at the end. I'm going to turn over to Tom now to get us started. Thanks Matt. So historically ASCs and hospitals have viewed each other as competitors for surgeons and their case volumes. ASCs have attracted physicians with predictability and scheduling, efficiency and throughput via efficient admissions, turnover and discharge, a high level of physician input into care decisions and often an ownership stake in the facility. Hospitals have traditionally attracted physicians with their ability to service cases across a broad range of acuity levels and ability and willingness to invest in new technologies, for instance, the Da Vinci robot, and of course the ability to admit patients who require additional care that a hospital can offer. Our current environment, that which we are experiencing today, uh, we're seeing uh, uh, pressures that are uh, uh, causing uh, procedural services to um, be focused on uh, and the pressure to move those into a lower cost environment is increasing. Uh, concurrent to that, we're seeing a medical advance in healthcare technologies uh, that are essentially able to cure those ailments that uh, previously used to lead to our own, uh, our own demise. Um, and this has resulted in an ever-increasing acuity demand at the inpatient level. Whereas a patient used to have, uh, you know, one or two comorbidities when they presented in, a, in an inpatient setting, they're now commonly presenting with uh, compounding morbidities, comorbidities. Uh, and this increasing cost to care for inpatients, coupled with the cost sensitivity surrounding lower acuity services, has led healthcare entities that were perfectly competitors to consider working in a collaborative manner to address, address these, uh, these, these challenges. So when we look at expanding services, we, when we look at cost savings opportunities, we, the, the key word here is the, is the word opportunity. Uh, and, and we see the opportunity 
uh, apply both in a single specialty historical environment as well as multi-specialty environments. Single specialty ASTs obviously were the origins of the outpatient surgery world uh, and, and currently present uh, a significant value in their, in their ability to service a very focused group of, of, uh, of patient needs. Um, expansion of service lines uh, obviously opens the door to increase volume in, in, in either ASC setting and, and often represent an even greater savings to payers as they, their patients in the ASC are, are obviously going to be paid at a lower rate than they are in the hospital setting. So over the past several years, a number of factors have contributed to the migration of surgical cases that had previously only been performed in the hospital setting into the ASC. The primary driver has been technologies that have minimized invasiveness and shortened peri and postoperative times and allowed for discharge to home. More recently, governmental and commercial payers are placing ever more emphasis on efforts to reduce the cost of care. Medicare is allowing more cases in the ASC and commercial payers are developing benefit plans that encourage the subscriber to choose the lower cost site of service. Uh, one example is that we found that uh, United Healthcare has specifically uh, targeted a, a number of um, procedures that they uh, are asking their um, physicians and uh, subscribers to uh, utilize the ASC as the sole site of service. We're also seeing that migration of procedures out of the uh, the facility setting, and this slide is intended to represent that that uh, in, in in very short order we expect uh, what are now common procedures in the ASC to be um, shifting out of a facility environment and into an office-based procedural environment. Um, the key drivers behind that obviously are, are benefit design changes and, and, and these cost pressures. As, uh, as, as, as payers are recognizing a, uh, a, a, an opportunity to, to move cases that can go into either setting, they're starting to create design uh, benefit design that will incentivize a patient uh, in the form of lower out-of-pocket expenses to at least consider that, that non-facility environment. Um, services such as epidural pain injections, uh, cystoscopies, um, uh, YAG lasers, upper and lower endoscopies, and, 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 and maybe sooner rather than later, even, even something like a cataract procedure uh, are, are, are common and, and, and reasonable services to uh, anticipate uh, moving away. Um, and, the, and the physician reimbursement world is, is, is paralleling this, this uh, this desire, if you will, the, 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 the Medicare approach to site of service differential and reimbursing a physician who performs a procedure in an environment with a higher allowable or higher payment is only placing the, the fiscal motivations in line with what, what an individual physician would want. Obviously, if they, they can be paid more to do it in an out, uh, out of facility setting, procedure room, et cetera, uh, the, the motivations to consider that uh, uh, grow. Um, so we believe Medicare is going to continue that site of service adjustment philosophy. We believe that Medicare is going to continue to incentivize its physician providers to uh, to consider that environment uh, going forward. We believe pa uh, commercial payers are going to follow suit. And uh, again, as patients are more and more sensitive to the amount of dollars that are coming out of their own pocket, all those forces will um, come together to to increase the, the likelihood of, of lower acuity services moving away from facility environments. And that's, that's really why we want to talk about the, the value of looking at the higher cost uh, or higher acuity services that are now on the horizon of surgical facilities as, a, as an opportunity to backfill that which we anticipate will be uh, departing surgical facilities in the very near term. Our experience over the past five years or so is that the greatest increase in cases moving from the hospital setting into the ASC has been in orthopedics, uh, spine, and GYN. Most centers find that adding these specialties has required that their commercial payer contracts be renegotiated to accommodate the migration of, of these complex cases. Payers uh, have traditionally not been um, accustomed to paying uh, appropriately for, for big cases in the ASC setting. Total joint replacement's been a particular 
area of emphasis for savings uh, by CMS is evidenced by their approval of um, unicompartmental knee and ACDF and uh, laminectomy and laminotomy procedures and the recent uh, proposal to remove uh, total knee from the inpatient only list and commercial payers are increasingly open to negotiating uh, total joints including total hip uh, due to the savings that are available when the cases move into the ASC. As you can see, we've listed some of the services that many ASCs are already performing uh, due to the savings that transitioning those cases from the hospital to the ASC represents. We find that this opportunity is uh, quite common when working with um, a hospital or health system, uh, notably one with employed physicians, when those cases that are otherwise performed in the ASC are still being done in the hospital. Um, hospitals are finding that moving the ASC eligible cases uh, is actually easing OR access for programs like trauma and invasive cardiovascular services uh, that require the support found in the hospital setup. This next slide, we, we look at more uh, moderate level acuity services and uh, categorize uh, general surgery, ENT, and urology. Um, you know, general surgery, lap coles and hernias, uh, are, uh, as well as breast reconstruction and gastric banding are now very commonly performed in the outpatient setting in a very safe environment. In the ENT world, uh, balloon sinuplasty, uh, obviously something that is, uh, Tims and Tubes, obviously uh, well established in, in, the, in the outpatient setting. But we're starting to see also some really high cost services like the cochlear and Baja implants um, becoming a more common service. And then on the urology side, this of these three specialties functions in a little bit more challenging uh, environment that on the one hand, bladders, uh, bladder slings, lithotripsy, very high cost services. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, cystos and needle biopsies, uh, much more common low cost services. And, and those last couple services, uh, cystos and needle biopsies are, are in, in many markets performed in the in the procedural setting out of a facility anyway. So as you can see in these in these specialties, some are are still very uh, hospital. I'm sorry, very outpatient uh, focused, and others have a have a mixture of services that can go in in, in either environment. So on on this slide, we see um, many of the cases that are have traditionally been performed over time in the ASC. Uh, but we do find that uh, many ASC contracts remain insufficient with regard to retina, spinal cord stimulators, and pain pumps, and that payers are recognizing the value of moving those services to the ASC when provided with details regarding cost. Um, services traditionally performed in the ASC, such as cataracts and endoscopy, uh, still may present an opportunity to be moved to the ASC if there is significant volumes being performed in the hospital, uh, as rare as that may uh, seem, but we have, we have seen uh, significant volumes still being performed in the hospital depending on the, uh, on the location. Alternatively, the hospital may find that performing endoscopy or cystos in an office site of service will reduce cost and encourage the payer to offer a gain sharing arrangement and uh, again to make note of uh, what Matt's already brought up and in, in that keeping in mind uh, the transition of, of slightly more complex cases to potentially offset the movement of some of the simpler cases out of the uh, ASC and into the office setting. So how are payers uh, getting involved or how are they influencing this, uh, this shift, the, the, the high cost, uh, high acuity services into outpatient settings, outpatient departments or surgery centers and the, and the low acuity services moving away? Well, obviously both CMS and commercial payers are, are interested in, uh, in a cost savings, uh, in the cost savings that those would represent. And Tom touched on this a moment ago. In July, CMS recommended the total knee arthroplasty be removed from the inpatient only list. Uh, and, and that's a clear indication that CMS is envisioning this service being provided uh, outpatient department in the near term and potentially even outpatient freestanding facility in the long term. Um, and, and, and typically when that happens, we see a, 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 an increasing acceptance at the commercial payer level. Uh, while some commercial payers may be ahead of Medicare in some of those types of, uh, of, of location, 
ships. Uh, there are others who will who will uh, adhere more closely to Medicare's philosophy on, on that kind of thing. Um, um, and, and in general, what's Medicare's uh, MO? Well, in that top box, you see it. You know, an inpatient to out patient department uh, code approval process, and then an HOPD to ASC code approval process. Um, and the outpatient prospective payment system for HOPDs and ASDs continues to expand and continues to uh, grow in terms of the number of services that are considered and the willingness to, to add more complex services. And lastly, we're seeing a closure uh, in terms of the gap on reimbursement rates. So uh, I think it was this year, the, the increase that's being proposed for uh, both ASC and HOPD, the HOPD and ASC list is, a, is, a, is an identical increase percentage-wise, uh, which is not something we've seen historically. Uh, and there's also talk, uh, although at this point unsubstantiated, of, of the potential for that, that delta between the HOPD and ASC uh, reimbursement rate to, to shrink further. Uh, obviously nothing uh, proven in, in that regard yet, but it's, it's something that's been discussed at, at, uh, at high levels. Um, and in terms of commercial payers, as the, as the CMS expansion of outpatient surgery continues, uh, it enables the medical directors at, 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 at uh, commercial payers to, to, again, approve more and more services for the, that ASC list. Uh, and as commercial payers are broadening their ASC list, uh, we see a, a, a willingness uh, to, to expand to services that, that Medicare still doesn't uh, approve for its over 65 population. Um, what this means then, uh, hospital to ASC cost savings opportunities continue to, uh, to expand, and the outcomes data that, that validates both their safety and cost effectiveness is appealing to, the, to, uh, to, to medical directors at the payer level, and that, that enables the approval process uh, to add those new services. Um, there are also a number of uh, uh, commercial payers uh, uh, who, who have approved services but haven't set rates for those, and so that, uh, that, that cost savings opportunity uh, helps to drive the, that negotiation and that, that rate setting process. Uh, and then finally, uh, commercial payers are practically taking steps to, to move cases um, to the ASC setting from the HOPD setting, and again, to move cases out of the ASC setting into a procedural or office space. And certainly on this next slide, uh, the unidirectionality of the arrows does not necessarily mean that the um, the influence of any of these factors necessarily goes in that direction. We want to keep the slide fairly clean, and we thought that if we put the arrows pointing in two different directions and had them going from each box to the other, it, it had just become a jumbled mess. Uh, but population dynamics uh, basically represents the employers and the uh, patient subscribers, as well as payers, that are all focused more than ever on reducing or or even uh, holding spend constant on health care costs as they continue to rise to un unprecedented levels over the last several years. Um, payer consolidation is demonstrated um, very clearly by the Anthem, Cigna, and uh, Aetna Humana mergers, payers are taking significant action to cut administrative costs and increase their ability to influence reimbursement. You know, we've seen actually in a number of markets uh, where we do uh, payer negotiations where we've um, been faced with the fact that they have a single negotiator negotiating all of the ASC contracts in a, in a given state. It um, tends to be uh, somewhat maddening at times, but understandable, I suppose. Uh, as cost and pressures mount, um, physicians are consolidating their practices and increasingly turning to employment, often by hospitals and health systems. And hospitals and health systems, uh, and we've noted, especially over the last two to three years, are devoting uh, significant and ever-increasing resource on updating their ambulatory care strategies in order to improve care and uh, reduce costs. And um, what we found in, in our experience is that hospital and ASC joint ventures have justifiably increasingly been identified as a means of reducing costs while often improving uh, patient experience and maintaining high quality income outcomes. Sorry. So what's What's driving the interest uh, by hospitals uh, and surgery centers to join venture with one another? Uh, well, there's uh, we split it into two categories for this uh, 
this slide, what's, uh, what are the hospital's uh, incentives or, or uh, uh, pressures, and then what's, uh, what's incentivizing the ASC. And you can see on the left side uh, there, the hospital, as we've touched on uh, already, under pr pressure to reduce cost, and that, that pressure is simply mounting uh, at an ever-increasing rate. Uh, you know, payers, employers, and patients are, are aware of the costs uh, associated with their, with their surgery. They're aware of the fact that um, uh, there are different uh, locations to receive care, they're becoming more educated, and uh, both uh, through their own utilization and, and, and payer efforts to uh, help them understand these 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 facility differences and the costs that come along with those. Um, there, there's also a, a growing influence in the in the in the community to to help patients understand truly what it's going to cost, and, and charge transparency uh, is is trending from higher. Uh, out, out, outcome to a mandatory outcome, uh, and there are states that are enacting various forms of legislation to to require providers uh, and, and payers to share that information so patients can make informed decisions. Uh, likewise, hospitals are increasingly aware of the perception that they are a high cost uh, environment, and that the consumers are increasingly concerned with those expenses and want to get out ahead of that uh, challenge before. The, the, there's a significant loss of, 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 of patient confidence and, 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 and patient appreciation for the, for the services that the hospitals are delivering. Uh, and then lastly, payers see and believe that you know, these savings will occur, um, but it, it's not uncommon for payers to enter a conversation this type with some trepidation. Uh, you know, are the cases truly going to sh uh, shift or is there, is there simply a, a, a desire to shift but no a methodology in place or force in place to cause those cases to shift. Um, on the ASC side, uh, you know, there's there's obviously an efficiency available uh, in the ASC setting that that equals reduced cost, um, and that reduced cost represents significant savings on the government and uh, for government and commercial payers. Um, the, and essentially, for ASCs, as we move away from a volume-based uh, reimbursement methodology to more of a value-based reimbursement methodology. Uh, the, the, the influences or the pressures to, to stay uh, relevant in an environment like that grow for surgery centers. And, and payers are continuing to implement value-based pricing and gain sharing arrangements that further incentivize uh, cases to shift to whatever the lowest cost setting is. Uh, and it, it's, it's critical for established ASCs to, to remain uh, part of that conversation. And, and so the benefit of getting in line or aligning with uh, a, a higher cost partner will be to, to serve as that, that uh, outlet or that vehicle for uh, shifting of, of, of medium to moderate to low cost services. So as uh, hospitals continue to expand um, highly complex programs, moving cases uh, to the ASC setting is often the most path to opening access to the hospital ORs and to accommodate the increasing demand for surgical solutions. As we talked before, the, uh, the improvements in technology um, have, have made uh, surgeries like total joints uh, so much more effective that you know they're they're increasingly in demand for those people those patients who are actually suffering and and can relieve and and actually lead more productive lives by having those um, surgeries at an earlier age. So the the uh, it's anticipated that the, uh, the utilization of those cases will will rise dramatically over the next few years. Uh, what we've also found is renovating or building uh, hospital OR spaces uh, time-consuming uh, and disruptive and the cost can be prohibitive, whereas the cost to renovate or build ASC space is typically significantly less than uh, the hospital surgical space. We, we frequently find that when we work with hospitals and systems on ASC projects, uh, the projections for build costs for the ASC are often met with skepticism by the hospital executives, architects, and contractors. Uh, needless to say, that skepticism later turns to um, happiness uh, when they are able to vet that, that data out. Um, and then there's also the recognition that um, 
most ASCs are actually run very efficiently and, and transitioning to that uh, efficient model of care uh, is uh, yet another reason for um, cases to the ASC either by acquiring or building uh, ASC space. So taking a deeper dive into into what's in incentivizing hospitals in this uh, in this environment, you know one of the one of the major uh, events over the past five to seven years has been the has been the hospital acquisition of private uh, physician practices or the expansion of their employed physician models. And uh, you know when, whether purchasing practices or continuing to employ, there uh, there is inherently a less efficient uh, productivity level for for surgeons when cases are performed in a hospital setting or in an inpatient. Uh, out, or outpatient uh, hospital department setting. Often those uh, organizations, those inpatient outpatient departments are, are, are commingled in terms of their utilization of, of equipment staff, et cetera, and it's um, inherently just less efficient to function in an environment where uh, ambulatory cases or elective cases can be bumped, can be delayed, uh, or, or can be canceled due to uh, the, the, the requirements of the emergent and traumatic services in, in hospital settings. So as, as, as hospitals have purchased surgeon practices or provider practices, uh, they, they found a, a reduction in terms of productivity if, if those providers are forced to remain in, an, in a hospital-based uh, operative environment. So the outpatient or freestanding environment uh, affords an opportunity to move those employed positions into an, a setting where uh, efficiency uh, and, and predictability are, 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 more, are more, the, more the norm. In addition, surgeons are increasingly under pressure to, to, to lower costs, and, and in the value-based world, that, that cost containment uh, continues to be a, a primary focus. Um, but, but doing so in a hospital setting, again, is, is much, much more difficult than a freestanding setting simply because of, of the, the structure that is needed to support an inpatient operative setting. Um, you know, the, the staffing models, the, the equipment models, the supply models are all designed to accommodate uh, um, unanticipated need and or the, the needs and wants of a, of a broader number of, of providers, um, whereas in an outpatient setting it's very common to have a, a more consolidated uh, staffing and supply and equipment model and a, a little more uh, direct interaction between uh, a surgeon and, and cost and a little more direct uh, cause and effect between that relationship. Um, and, and in general, ASC is already less expensive to operate than, than hospital ORs, and that savings is simply compounded when the financial incentives that come with ASC operation and even ownership are, are put into play. Um, you know, physician partners or physician uh, participants in an ASC uh, that, are, that are sharing in a bottom line or sharing in a cost savings program are, are inherently motivated to, to help in that regard. Uh, the, the risks that are associated with, with um, cost savings or practice pattern changes that help lower uh, costs uh, are, are therefore rewarded. Um, and we also see in the, in the hospital employed model uh, a number of uh, facilities looking for ways to, to uh, not only increase productivity but to, to provide some additional dollars to their, to their surgeon uh, employees and um, you know, that, that freestanding environment where the surgeon is, is uh, incentivized to help lower cost can, can also take the form of uh, uh, reimbursing that surgeon for a management services responsibility uh, to, to help run the center efficiently and effectively. So another constructive way to, to help, uh, help maintain uh, a more satisfied physician employment model uh, through, through means that they get the surgeon involved and, and participating in, in what is a mutually beneficial outcome. And part of hospitals uh, continued efforts to create and maintain better relationships with uh, both employed and independent physicians ASCs represent a poten uh, potentially represent an effective solution to physician alignment you know, physicians really uh, welcome the opportunity to work in an ASC environment on a day-to-day -day basis where they are uh, truly often team leaders uh, in a sense and um, They'd also rather be uh, working in the OR than um, in the break room uh, waiting for an emergent case to clear. Uh, joint venture may uh, offer employed physicians uh, paid on an RVU basis an opportunity to increase their income simply by being more productive in the ASC. Three cases in a day, say, 
versus two in the hospital. Um, employed physicians might also uh, contribute to the center uh, through a management services agreement and performing some administrative duties. Uh, and independent community physicians um, might also be invited to join the ASC as, as partners or simply as uh, tenants and find that their, their productivity is greater and that their relationship with the hospital improves. So as we talked about earlier, the, the, the existing surgical facility or freestanding surgery center, um, uh, you know, what, what is it that's motivating the consideration to, to look at a hospital venture? And, 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 and this isn't to imply that there's the only approach to this is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a tight fiscal joint venture. Sometimes these can, be, these can be alliances. There can be other structures that allow uh, these two entities to work in, in partnership in, in a way that's mutually beneficial. Uh, and, and that top bullet is, is a critical element of this. I mean, the increased volume, uh, you know, is generally going to result in increased revenue. And, and, and because we're, we're, we're sensing and seeing a decreasing uh, volume um, in, in existing centers or the pressures to start to move cases out of certain types of facilities, uh, adding or backfilling with new volume becomes becomes more and more important. Um, and that, that new volume doesn't necessarily have the opportunity to come from the existing surgeon partners or existing case mix. It, it has to be found in, in new areas. Uh, so again, the ability to work with the hospital to identify logical cases to shift from the inpatient setting or from the outpatient department and into this freestanding setting so the hospital can um, decompress and, 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 if you will, retool with a different uh, or more acute case mix. Obviously, the diversified service line and an ASC also decreases financial risk and, and operational risk by spreading out uh, the, the, the cost and spreading out the, the fixed uh, expenses over a broader number of cases, then naturally the, the, the cost per case goes down and the financial risks go down. However, having said that, it, it's not to say that simply adding cases generates uh, positive results. Most existing centers have a contract structure, and we'll touch on this in a moment that is designed for that center's existing mix. And so uh, when looking at an expansion into to new services, uh, it, it's important to also look at how to add the services in a financially productive manner. And that's by going back through contracts and assessing the opportunity. Um, increased volumes uh, uh, as a result of a joint venture or uh, some kind of a, a relationship with a health system uh, typically maximize productivity. Uh, you know, if, if the ORs are operating at 60, 70 percent, we're looking to get these more to 80, 85 percent productivity. Uh, and, and, and these new cases and new volumes generally afford the opportunity to approach a managed care payer for renegotiation. And by that, I mean uh, you know, an existing case mix at a facility that is contracted properly doesn't really present significant opportunities to, to, to return to a payer and seek uh, uh, meaningful increases or significant increases. I mean, typically renegotiations can adjust for certain services that are uh, out of alignment and or some, some, some modest rate increases, but there really isn't the opportunity to go in and get significant rate increases when a, when a volume or a case mix remains constant. However, when that case mix changes, uh, especially when a case mix moves towards a more acute environment like a, a, a spine or a total joint uh, delivery model, uh, there becomes a perfect opportunity to approach a payer and revisit the contract as a whole. And, and by that I mean, uh, you know, if, if the surgery center is going to take on the risk and responsibility of moving towards a more acute case mix, uh, there naturally has to be not only contracted reimbursement to make that work, but it would also be logical in my mind to, to say to the payer, listen, if you know, bringing those total joints over is going to save a couple million dollars, um, it would be nice for the for the surgery center to receive uh, you know, a, a modest portion of that savings as a as a reward for the risk and as a reward for taking the initiative and and and, and being responsible for um, adding the the technology and the services and the and the competencies to to make that happen. Um, and uh, so the opportunity then to, to renegotiate perhaps the broader list of services with, with some increases that, that are going to create a win-win scenario. And then lastly, just access to uh, other types of reimbursement uh, models that are starting to become more common. Um, funnel payment initiatives, uh, uh, cost sharing programs, uh, you know, value-based pricing programs, all things that 
as a as a standalone ASC with with no uh, relationships or affiliation are, are are more difficult to to simply be considered for or be in the conversation at the start. And so participation with a with a uh, with a system or with with other organizations that are participating in that that cost continuum enables the surgery center to be uh, part of the conversation and to be considered for uh, you know participation in that uh, that bundled payment model or that value based model or or at least to be uh, you know at the table represented in some form or fashion. And some observations uh, based on our experience recently in that um, both acuity um, and higher acuity uh, services are continuing to migrate to uh, lower cost uh, sites of service uh, for any and um, payers have been uh, actually quite receptive to uh, hospital a ASC partnerships, uh, not only because of the, the, the potential for cost savings, but when, when the hospital is on board and supportive, the payers are more confident that the, the volumes will actually shift. Um, hospitals, it's actually as a, as a former uh, ASC administrator, it's actually quite gratifying to see that the hospitals are increasingly recognizing that um, joint ventures with ASCs offer a means to reduce cost whilst maintaining a favorable margin. I think that's actually um, somewhat surprising to some uh, hospital executives. Um, and they're also very uh, focused on and pleased with the idea that they can improve patient satisfaction um, while while reducing that cost. Uh, and they also welcome the opportunity to partner with uh, employed and non-employed physicians. And that we've also found that including uh, service lines like total joint replacement, spine, and GYN, and, and to some extent cardiology, while certainly not necessary, uh, increases the opportunity for those, those uh, partnerships. So in this last section, we're going to talk about some of the keys we see to working with payers to achieve success uh, for a venture like the ones we're, we're, we're talking about. Um, you know, when partnering with a health system or hospital, uh, contracts need to be evaluated. So the, the, the center's contracts as well as the health system's contracts, if it's a venture uh, uh, where there's going to be some joint ownership. Um, in, in many markets, uh, spine cell joint services are, are only now becoming more commonplace in the freestanding ASC setting. And, and contracts are, are often not aligned to account for the provision of those and other high cost services uh, in, in freestanding centers today. Um, and, and as you all know, an, an appropriate reimbursement uh, for any service is, is fundamental uh, to successfully migrating cases into a, into a, uh, a freestanding setting, especially when those cases require significant capital investment uh, and or experience uh, uh, risks associated with uh, high cost devices, uh, things of that nature. So we, 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 we always caution against assumptions uh, that, that uh, uh, existing contracts, be they the surgical facilities or even the health systems, uh, will, will alleviate any and all of those problems. Um, it, it's not always automatic that a, that a health system contract can be assignable to a new venture. It's not always automatic that an existing venture has the, the appropriate payment system in place. Uh, and so when evaluating these types of ventures, it's, it's critical to understand what those, what those reimbursement structures look like and whether they're designed to, to, be, uh, to be immediate and plug and play or whether there needs to be some redesign associated with those. Um, uh, once the process of evaluating those is, is understood uh, and, 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 and done so in a legally acceptable manner, uh, you know, it's important to engage payers uh, promptly. Uh, any change of this type is going to take some time. Uh, again, the, the, the payers need to be educated to the extent uh, possible, uh, especially with regards to higher cost and higher special, uh, acute specialties uh, that, that may be new to the center or maybe new in the market uh, in an outpatient setting, uh, spinal total joints being great examples of that. Um, you know, 
payers naturally are going to expect uh, a negotiation to result in overall savings or, or, or reduction in cost. Um, there's no new money out there uh, uh, waiting to be to be spent. So uh, you know the, the payers are, are are working within the within the dollars that are available to the system uh, to the to the payment system. So um, dollars need to be identified from one location or savings to 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 afford these kinds of uh, ventures and make them appealing to payers to 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 consider seriously. Um, and and really a clear and demonstrated support by the hospital health system is 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 key. To validating um, the opportunity and, and to getting a pair to recognize that these cases truly will transition from the higher setting, higher cost setting, into uh, into a, into a lower cost setting. Uh, you know, this is not something that that uh, is done on promise and 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 and, and faith. It's, it has to be done with the, with the true understanding that that indeed um, this partnership is designed to to uh, to modify or change previous practices and get. Uh, get these cases into a into a cost saving setting. And in terms of uh, how we actually work with uh, our clients to uh, imp assess and and make decisions with regarding uh, moving forward with the partnerships and then uh, actually executing the plan to uh, bring additional cases into an ASC JV. Um, the assessment phase, uh, basically we will uh, collect data from both the hospital and ASC, of course keeping the data separate uh, as necessary to understand the costs, model contracts, to determine the impact on revenue. Uh, our, analysts, our analysis often include the due diligence visit to the ASC to assess the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, which provides the hospital with assurance regarding the care the ASC offers and confirms the feasibility of, of servicing new volumes. On the side, we'll uh, provide the client with a plan for working with payers to negotiate contracts that will accommodate the cases that will result from the JV. And then the actual execution phase, uh, working with the payers to renegotiate the the contracts that will result in uh, both a favorable rate for the ASC and savings for the payer. Uh, the payer analytics take time, so the negotiations generally do, uh, because payers need uh, data on cost and savings. Um, sometimes seemingly obvious messages take time. Uh, we're currently working on contracting for a hospital ASC JV in a conservative market, and the payers have all requested data on outcomes and anticipated costs for post-surgical care. Uh, not surprisingly, the rate negotiation has varied uh, quite a bit from payer to payer. Uh, one seems to fully grasp the concept that while uh, $10,000 a case, and I'm, I'm actually just making a number up here, is, is much higher than anything they've paid in an ASC, since that $10,000 dollars represents the 35 to 40 percent savings versus the hospital and there are hundreds of cases that can move uh, the rate is beneficial to the payer overall uh, unfortunately uh, one of the other payers is, is just stuck on the number of ten thousand dollars in the ASC uh, we also uh, work with the client to uh, provide data to let the payers know that the outcomes are maintained I, I say maintain largely because improving outcomes is uh, up to the physicians and the site of service for ASC eligible elective surgery should not significantly affect outcomes. Certainly the hospitals are doing a very good job. Uh, patient experience will markedly change, however. Um, anecdotally, and I've, I've actually gotten permission to talk about this, um, my wife recently had a cervical fusion um, at a local hospital. The care was great. Uh, the process really wasn't um, all that wonderful. It took um, several calls to get registered and, and ready. Uh, we arrived on the day of surgery at 5.30 for a 7.30 case. Uh, my wife was in recovery for three hours and then to the PACU for another three. Um, there was an overnight stay. Um, and then four hours the next day waiting for PT and OT, um, even after the docs had been in to uh, discharge her. I'm, I'm actually working with 
the surgeons in question on a spine on their spine center, and um, my understanding is that had that same case been done in the in the center where they actually just had their uh, AAA deem status survey, uh, we for a seven o'clock case we would have arrived at 6:15 and most likely uh, would have been discharged at about three o'clock. So that that experience really actually uh, factors in for both the patient and the family. So that, I believe, wraps up our, our presentation. So if anyone has any questions, please uh, submit them. Yes, and, and thank you, Tom and Matt, for that fantastic presentation. Um, we will now begin today's question and answer session. So please submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. And we will try to, try to get through as many questions as we have time for. Um, there have already been some questions submitted, so I'll go ahead and, and jump in with the first one, which is, what is your anticipated time frame in years for how much longer the majority of total joints will be inpatient-centric, given the recent recommendation by CMS for total knees to be removed from the IP-only list? Well, um, I, that's... Uh, uh, I'd love to be a mind reader and tell you, but it, it seems that now that the uh, now that there's a major emphasis on, emphasis on reducing cost, and there, I, I would certainly imagine that there's plenty of data to show that there uh, that total knee is um, safe and effective on an outpatient basis. Six months, maybe a year, hopefully sooner. I think it depends in large part on on the lobbying efforts that might be made by uh, physicians and um, by outpatient centers. And, and I think the challenge here, you know, is um, removal in, in Medicare's perspective. Obviously, Medicare has to be mindful of the fact that anyone between the ages of 65 and whatever 100 could have this service, and they can't necessarily make these decisions uh, by age class, right? So they can't say 65 to 75. Otherwise healthy adult, you're allowed, but 75 to 95 with potential comorbidities, you're not. I mean, they have to make it consistent. So some of the challenge lies in, in, in how Medicare uh, identifies the, the, that, that risk uh, and how they address it. Um, I, I think along with what Tom was saying, their, Medicare's desire is to demonstrate that these are performed safely uh, and, and effectively, but I, 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 I can't. I, I mean, it's difficult for us to say that in, 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 in the short term, all of these will be allowed uh, from the Medicare perspective. Uh, they're certainly going to start to put in place the, uh, the, the process to try to get cases in the most appropriate environment. And you know, a lot of that ultimately depends on giving the physician the ability to, to uh, ascertain whether the, the Medicare member is safe to, uh, to take that outpatient environment or not. Um, and, We'd like to think that that decision making already exists appropriately, uh, but uh, but again, it's 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 difficult to unilaterally say all or none. Great, thank you both for offering your um, insight on that. Um, we have time for another question, and um, this question is: Typically, what is the reimbursement for a total knee or hip performed in a house, hospital outpatient department versus an ASC in the southeast? Also, can you perform TJR cases in Medicare Advantage plans? Why don't I take the cost one? This is Matt. I'll have I'll let Tom take the the TRJ point of this question. Um, the typical reimbursement for an outpatient knee in a hospital department obviously depends on what that hospital's uh, contract with their with their commercial payers are. I I don't know that I could point to one standard amount. Um, you know that that, that applies to Hospitals throughout a broad region like the Southeast. Um, in, in general, we see um, total joint rates in, in urban areas typically a little bit lower than we do in, in more rural environments. Uh, and, and typically, the uh, markets like 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 Florida uh, tend to have a, a again greater cost pressure, therefore lower reimbursements. Um, what we what we generally recommend to to folks who want to understand what is the reimbursement in their market 
uh, you know, we, we, the easiest way to obtain that is through is through uh, patient EOBs. Uh, so if if, uh, if surgeons are looking for the answer to this question, it's it's go to your patients who you're performing surgery on and ask them to bring you a copy of their their hospital EOB. Uh, that will provide uh, you know some sense of of market and and uh, some sense of what what these what these procedures cost. Um, again, in, in in the hospital setting, they're having to care for a much broader acuity level, uh, a range of acuity levels. So, you know, the 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 the, the hospital is designed and in place to handle uh, patients with comorbidities that that may not be ASC appropriate. So uh, sometimes, again, just a, a flat price comparison is is, is somewhat misleading. It, it's more important to try to identify outpatient appropriate total joints in that uh, in that pricing compares. Then with regard to the uh, question on can you perform total joint replacement cases on Medicare Advantage plans uh, totally dependent on the case itself, uh, your uh, Medicare Advantage, uh, Advantage contract, and then uh, from the center's perspective, can, can you accommodate the, the cost and the uh, and the acuity level of the patient? Are you going to be able to discharge that patient to home uh, after that case? And certainly, uh, again, assuming that um, that you want to um, comply with the the Medicare um, rule to get your patients home and, and not keep them overnight. I think that's basically the, sh the short answer to it. And the, the data, uh, the data is actually all in your contract. Well, thank you very much. And it looks like that's all the time that we have for questions today. But I do want to thank Tom and Matt for their excellent presentation and to our audience for, for participating today. And please enjoy the rest of your day. And we look forward to having you join us for future webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you.